Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. Today, we're gonna to be talking about our Atlas 40 volt chainsaw a little bit and what I think is the perfect use for this saw. So we've got our 40 volt saw. We do have the dual voltage battery where this will work in the 40 volt or 80 volt saw, either one. I use the 80 volt just simply because you get twice the runtime or pretty much twice the runtime out of the battery. So to me, this is not the perfect saw that you'd want to take out and just firewood with every day. One, because it's, it's battery, and once your battery goes dead, you have to wait on it to charge up or you have to have a bunch of batteries there. Also, you can't overheat the saw by running it too much. What I really like about this saw is the capability of just pulling the trigger and running it making a cut or two that you might need to do and then set it back down and you're done with it for five or 10 minutes until you're ready to cut again. So follow along with us today as we take you through some of the little chores and things around the property that this saw is perfect for. Have I ever mentioned how much I like this? Because when you're not using it, it's quiet. You have no sound from it at all. Once you let off the trigger, completely silent. When you're ready to use it, it's ready to go. So did you ever get into splitting your firewood and start running into stuff like this or in a situation where you start running into stuff that's too long to put in a splitter and you only need to make a couple cuts just to be able to finish running everything through or to shorten up some small pieces just to toss them on the pile. Now this little load of wood here, I actually managed to run into a tree company and they were uh, nice enough to let me have the tree. But I really appreciate that because I can use all the firewood that I can get. They were just going to haul it to the dump. So they were like, yeah, it would be awesome if you can use it, you can have it. So I was like, sure, that'd be great. I'll come pick it up. But anyways, you know, they don't always cut it to length. And you may need to make a couple cuts in there while you're splitting. And again, you don't have to crank on your saw. You can just run over there with your battery saw and cut it in too. And same way when you get into stuff like this, which this is kind of still stuck under there, but you've got these long, small limbs, you're definitely not gonna split this kind of stuff, but it's too long to fit in your stove and it's big enough to where you can still burn it. You just grab your saw, cut it off, and you don't have to keep restarting your saw. 
So while I was at it, I went ahead and made a few more cuts and cut off some of those little ends and stuff that were left on there. So, you know, I'm ready pretty much to go back to splitting and not have to stop anymore. So I like to be able to keep that battery powered saw close by. That way for stuff like that, I, and, and usually, of course, I don't even turn off the splitter. I only turned it off so you could hear me. Uh, you know, but you just run over there. You can just cut up a couple things, set your saw down. You don't have to worry about shutting it off or trying to pull start it or anything. It just works out great. So another thing I like to do, of course, you just slide your sheath on here and just toss it in the back of your razor, which my razor don't have much of a bed on it, but it's always stayed in there. And, uh, you know, if I go out on the trail, then, you know, I've got the saw with me. And if I run into a, a tree limb hanging out in the trail or a tree even that is falling across the trail, then I've got my saw right there ready to go. And once again, I don't have to worry about jumping out and trying to start it. Plus, it's a very capable saw. You know, you think, well, you know, it's a battery saw. Is it going to cut down a tree that actually fell across uh, the trail? Or can you just cut little tree limbs out of the way? Well, you can do both. This is a 16-inch saw, and it will cut to its capacity uh, without any problems. This wouldn't be a saw that you'd want to cut the entire tree up for firewood. In fact, I've actually done a video on that using this saw and the 80 volt and you definitely tend to go through batteries and you can overheat the saws, which I don't think that you can actually hurt the saw. It just heats up and then shuts off because it's got a protection on it that will keep you from overworking it or overheating it and burning stuff up. So with that being said, you know, if you're clearing a tree out and you need to make a few cuts to get uh, a tree out of the road for you to get past, it will definitely be capable of doing that kind of stuff. In fact, let me show you some footage of what this saw is actually capable of. This right here is a nice size poplar log. And I'd say, I mean, it's, it's a good 13, 14 inch log right here. So as you can see, the bar is 16 inches and it only sticks out a couple inches past the log. So this is pretty close to capacity uh, or bar length. You could cut from both sides and make an even bigger cut. But this is just kind of give you an idea of its capability. So after everything that you've seen on the video today has been cut at the same time with the same battery, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing been cut or anything or no, uh, I haven't recharged the battery or anything like that. We're at three bars on the battery. So after all the small cuts and stuff that was made and then uh, cutting on the pallet, cutting on those little small limbs and a few pieces of smaller firewood, and then coming over here and cutting these four nice size chunks of uh, firewood and like i said th these are about 14 inches they're about two inches shy of being the length of the bar so i mean they're pretty good cuts but if you was out on the trail 
and you had a tree laying across there, then you wouldn't have to worry about whether this saw would actually do that or not. That's what I like about it the most actually is the convenience because after you're finished with it, you don't have to worry about the saw being hot whenever you put it back into your uh, machine that you're on the trail with or whatever. So once you've made your cuts, you've cleared your trail, you can put it back on there and, and you're good to go. And if you happen to come up to another one, you don't have to yank start the thing to get it going again. And it's just, it's just super convenient for things like that, the small things. I love it on the splitter because if I need to make one cut, I don't have to go over there and pull on the rope several times to get it going. That just adds to the stress of your day and you know how much you have to work. If you're already splitting wood, you're already working pretty hard. So then adding that to it is just that much more. So it definitely makes that a little bit easier. So thanks for checking out the video today and following along with us and seeing what's going on around the property. Like I say, our Atlas 40 volt saw, I think this is the perfect type of jobs for that saw. This saw, you can overheat it if you work it too hard, but if you're using it for the odd jobs and the smaller things, as you can see, it's capable of cutting, you know, good size logs, but you can't do it continuously. If you're out on the trail and there's a tree across the road, perfect saw, just grab it out of the back of whatever machine you're in and just saw that thing out of the way and go on about your business. So just to add a couple things to the end of this video that could be a downside actually to this saw. One, you're not typically carrying gas with this saw. And in my situation, I actually carry the gas and the oil in one can. Uh, it's, it's a Husqvarna combi can and it's got one side has gas, one side has oil. So anytime that I grab that can, I have both. If I have my 40 volt saw, there's no need to grab a gas can. You either need to make sure that you fill it up before you leave, or you have to carry an oil can with you or that gas can still. But if you're using it for those odd jobs, like I'm talking about, you're probably not gonna run through a tank of oil, you know, and need to add more to it. So if you're just carrying it with you, you can saw through a couple of trees while you're out on the trail and then come back and then fill it up again for the next time that you need to use it or whatever. Probably the biggest downfall I could see to having an electric chainsaw, and I don't, I've not seen any listings whatsoever address this. I do not believe that you could leave this out in the back of your truck if it rains, which means that whenever you transport this, if there's a chance of it raining, you need to make sure that you're gonna be able to set it inside the vehicle. And if you're, if you're transporting this in a nice vehicle, you may not wanna have bar oil leaking out and have it leaking out into your seat or into your floorboard. You will not have a good container to be able to set it on or some nice floor mats that are easily washed or whatever in case there is some oil leakage. So like I say, nobody has said anything about them being waterproof or water resistant or anything like that. And that tells me that they are not by no means. So you definitely wanna keep it dry. So if you're out in the woods somewhere and it starts to rain, once again, you have that problem. With a gas chainsaw, you can rain on it all day long and as long as it don't fill up with water somehow then you're going to be able to start it up and run it that's pretty much the biggest downfalls that i can see is that you've either still got to carry an oil can with you or always make sure that you do fill it up before you leave and you can't get it wet thanks for following along with the video today i hope this helps someone out if you're a homeowner and you've just got some things you want to keep trimmed up around your house it'd be the perfect saw for that but to go out and cut firewood it would not be the perfect saw for it. it's a great saw in its element and it's a very powerful saw. It works well, it's convenient. I like it myself, but I've had the chance to use this saw now for the last couple months. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. You know, I'm just giving my honest opinion about the uses, functionality, and kind of the, the things that I like or dislike about it. So anyways, thanks again for following along with the channel. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to click that subscribe button, follow along with us for all the projects going on around the property. Thanks for watching.